Welcome back to Nanny Bee's Mission Time. This is still week one, and we are on day four of um, Hudson Taylor learning about him being a missionary to China. And so um, we left off where he was told he had to leave the, the island where he was ministering. He was working. He was helping um, the sick. He was teaching the people the gospel and that he was told by the officials he had to leave. So um, how disappointed Hudson Taylor was when he had to leave his Chinese home and friends um, on the big island. And he didn't understand it. God must have another place for me to live and work, he thought. And he was right. Um, he had told many of uh, these people about the Lord Jesus. Now his Heavenly Father had another place for him to live and work. Besides, there was a surprise for him. Remember, we wanted to find out what the surprise was, so you get to find out today. Do you think you know what the surprise was? So you're going to listen to find out. Sometime after Hudson left the island, he traveled to the city of Ningpo. And I am not Chinese, so I don't know if I'm saying these names right, so bear with me. So we're going to call it Ningpo. You may find out it is pronounced a different way. Ningpo was a old city hidden about six miles of um, behind six miles of ivory-covered walls. Hudson's two missionary friends, Dr. Parker and Mr. Jones, lived here. He went to get fresh medical supplies from them. While he was with them, they said, Why don't you stay here? You can live in the house we rented near the Big Pagoda. It is on Bridge Street, a quiet street between the two lakes. That would be just the place for you. It seemed that uh, to Hudson that this must be the place where God wanted him to live. So he made the tile roof attic of his house his home. The downstairs rooms he used in many ways. It was a boy's school room, a place for him to treat the sick, and a dining room where he fed 40 to 70 hungry people. Evenings, the room became a chapel where he taught God's word. It was his greatest joy to tell these people about the ones who loved the poor, sick, sinful, and needy, the one who gave his life to save them. Hudson was happy in this new home God had given him. Not far away was a mission school for Chinese girls. One of the teachers there was a bright, cheerful English girl. Hudson met her and secretly came to love her. But it was a secret he couldn't keep. He believed it was God's plan for her to be his wife. He shared his secret with her and found she felt the same way he did. So he became engaged to Maria Dyer. Maria, you see, was God's surprise gift for Hudson. God had not only given him a home, he was giving him someone to live and work with him in it. What a wonderful surprise. One day before Hudson and Maria were married, Maria had a friend who was going to have tea with Hudson. But that morning, um, after a skimpy breakfast, Hudson had no food left. Worst of all, he had no money. What should he do? He talked it over with his friend, Mr. Jones. So then together they knelt and asked their Heavenly Father to send them some money or food. While they prayed, an excited Chinese helper ran into the room calling, Teacher, teacher, here are letters. Days before the mail from England was expected, letters had come. And one letter was, yes, a gift of money. How Mr. Jones and Hudson prayed and thanked God for the answer to their prayers that they were in the middle of praying when the letters came in. Um, then Hudson heard, hurried to buy food for his tea guests. At tea time, when Hudson was alone with Maria, he thought, I must tell her how poor I am. He explained that he had no money of his own. He received no salary. When I need anything, he told Maria, I ask the Lord for it and trust him to send it. If you marry me, you can see how it will be. Do you still think you are willing to be my wife? Maria's eyes twinkled. Have you forgotten? She asked. I have been an orphan in a far off land. God has been my father all these years since my father died. Do you think I shall be afraid to trust him now? Hudson could have shouted for joy. Maria was willing to trust God just like he did. Oh, how he loved her. Two weeks later, Hudson and Maria were married. They moved into the attic, which Hudson had made into an apartment. Their face shone with love and joy as they began to work together for the Lord Jesus. 
Weekdays, Maria gathered children in the downstairs room and taught them how to read God's word and how to write. She visited the mothers and grandmothers, too, and talked to, with them about the Savior. Hudson doctored the sick, fed the poor, and preached every evening. From early morning to late at night, Maria and Hudson were busy loving, helping, teaching the Chinese for Jesus' sake. Often they became very tired, but to them it was the most joyful work in the world. How thrilled they were when to sue a Chinese teacher and his mother trusted Jesus as their savior. Then Fawn, a basket maker, believed too, and Wang, a grass cutter, Wang the painter, and still others became happy Christians. Mr. Nye was a leader of idol worshipers, but he was worried about his sins. He was unhappy and afraid because he did not know what would happen to him after he died. One ev evening, Mr. Nye happened to pass the open door of the mission. A big bell was being rung and people were going inside. Someone said a teacher was going to talk about God, so he went in. Perhaps these people can tell me the things I long to know, he thought. He sat down and listened attentively. The teacher explained that the one true God loved the world so much that he sent his only son to earth. This son suffered and died on a cross to pay for the wrong things sinners had done. He was buried and three days later rose again from the dead. And God forgives the sins of those who believe in his son, said the teacher. He gives them eternal life. Mr. Nye's eyes were shining with wonder. Never had he heard such wonderful things before. When Hudson stopped talking, Mr. Nye stood up slowly. I have searched for the truth, he said earnestly, but without finding it. I have traveled far and near and have never found it. I have found no peace, but I find peace in what I have heard tonight. From now on, I am a believer in Jesus. From that evening, Mr. Nye began to study the Bible eagerly. Everywhere he went, he was a joyful missionary for Jesus. He became one of the missionary's best helpers. After a few days of Mr. Nye, that Mr. Nye believed in Jesus, he asked Hudson, How long have you had this good news in your country? Some hundred years, answered Hudson, feeling ashamed. What? exclaimed Nye in amazement. Hundreds of years? Can it be that your people have known about Jesus so long and have only now sent someone to us? He shook his head sadly. My father looked for the truth for more than 20 years and died without finding it. Oh, why did missionaries not come sooner? Hudson never forgot Nye's question. It made him long to do all he could so China's millions might hear about God's son. He hoped that he that many might believe in him, be saved from their sins. Maria and Hudson seemed already to be doing all they could, didn't they? Yet soon they were doing even more. Dr. Parker, who had started the first hospital in Ningpo, had to go home to Scotland suddenly, and there was no doctor to take his place. Before he left, Dr. Parker came to Hudson and asked, Could you take over my work for me? Surprised, Hudson answered, I will. If God shows me, I should. He talked with the Lord about it and felt that he should do it. Dr. Parker could only leave enough money to pay the Chinese hospital helpers for one month. Where would Hudson get money for food and medicine for 60 patients in a hospital? What about the many other patients who came every day for medicine and help? How could he pay the helpers? Hudson did not know. But remember, he had learned to trust God for everything he needed. Hudson called the Chinese workers together. I have no money to pay you next month, he said. Are you willing to trust God to send what we need? Some of them were willing. Others were not, and they quit their jobs. With so few helpers, how would Hudson care for all the sick people? When Hudson's friends heard about this, they hurried to the hospital. We will help you, they said cheerfully. They cared for the sick, cleaned, cooked, and made beds. They told the patients about Jesus. One morning... The cook gave Hudson some startling news. I have opened our last bag of rice, he announced. It will soon be gone. And right then, Hudson had no more money either. He had not received any for a long time. Well, then the Lord's time, is, well, then the Lord's time to help us is at hand, smiled Hudson. And it was so. 
Before the rice was gone, again, a letter arrived from England. In it was a check for 50 pounds, which equaled about $250. The far-off friend who had sent it knew nothing about the hospital, yet God had put it in his heart to send the money at just that time. And in the letter, the friend asked, write and tell me if you need money. I have more and want to give to God's work. Hudson and Maria <laughs> rejoiced and thanked God for the big answer to their prayers. They called their Chinese friends together, showed them the check, and read the letter to them. Ah, yeah, exclaimed the friends happily. They sang and praised God too. And then they ran back to care for the patients and tell them how God had answered prayer. See, they said how God in heaven answers prayers of those who belong to him. The patients nodded their heads. Where is an idol that can do anything like this, they wondered. In nine months, 16 of the patients believed in the Lord Jesus and was baptized. 30 others said they trusted Jesus. Hudson and Maria were glad and thankful for those who had trusted Jesus as their Savior. How thankful for they were, too, for God's loving care. God had sent them what they needed for themselves their helpers, and for hundreds of sick people. But there were millions and millions of Chinese who needed to know about Jesus, and there were so few missionaries. If only there was more, Hudson was getting very tired from the long, busy days of hard work. There was too much for one doctor to do. Soon he became weak and sick. He knew he had to, to get rest or he would die. He was willing to die for Jesus in China, he said. Had I a thousand lives, China should have every one. No, not China, but Christ. Can we do too much for him? Can we do enough for such a savior? But it seemed to Hudson that God was telling him he would not die in China now. God wanted him to go home to England. But he did not understand, he thought. But I will trust my father in heaven. He knows best. It was hard for Hudson to leave the land and the people that he loved. He wished he did not have to go. But on June, July 1860, he, Maria, and their baby daughter, Grace, Gracie, and the Christian painter, Wang Li Jung, sailed away for England. Do you think this was the end of Hudson's missionary work in China? Would he die? Would he get well? What would happen? You're going to find out tomorrow. Okay, here's your questions. There's five of them. Ready? Uh, though Hudson Taylor was disappointed when he had to leave his Chinese friends on the island, what did he believe God had planned? At the very beginning of today's lesson, he believed that God had another place for him to live and work, which, of course, God did. Second question. After Hudson found a place to live, how did he use his home to serve the Lord? So he lived up in the attic part, and then downstairs, he used it to, as a boy's schoolroom, a place to treat the sick, a dining room to feed hungry people, and a chapel where he taught God's word. And so he made, out of a small space, he used it for the Lord in every way he could. Third question, how did Maria feel about the fact that Hudson Taylor had no money of his own? She, just like Hudson, was willing to trust God to provide for all their needs and um, was willing to still become his wife. Question number four. After Mr. Nye believed in the Lord Jesus as his Savior, what question did he ask Hudson Taylor? He asked, why did the missionaries not come sooner? Because in England, they had known about Jesus for hundreds of years, but the people in China we're just finding out about it. And so why did the missionaries not come? Why had people not told? And still today, there are people on this earth who have never heard the name of Jesus once. When just in this simple lesson that I've taught you that's 14 minutes long, I've told you about Jesus multiple times. So we need to pray that God will send people to share here and abroad to countries that have never heard. Question number five, why did Hudson Taylor return to England where there was so much to do, when there was so much to do in China? Because he became very sick and he had to get rest in China, I mean in England, in order to um, 
do what God wanted him to do. And he doesn't know what that is yet. He just know he and his wife and baby daughter and a, a Chinese painter is heading back to England. And he, God, he doesn't know what God has planned for him there. He just know God said, go back home. And that's where he's going. So we're going to find out tomorrow and the last of our lesson on Hudson Taylor on what God has planned for him back in England, away from China and the people that he loves there. So see you tomorrow and we will find out what happens.